starting with the new chapter called risk management understanding the learning points that we have in this chapter this is what one of the very good chapter and uh, it will help you to understand the risk management as subject which is there in your elective if at all you take the elective as a risk management then whatever you study over there a portion of that so you study over here this is what we have now we can see that so the name of the chapter is the risk management so we understand that so basically we are going to understand that how to manage risk this is what so we are going to have understanding over here that's a how we will manage the risk that we have so first of all what is the risk that we are required to understand once we understand the risk then we will understand that's a how we are going to manage it over here the institute has say divided the entire chapter into certain segments the first is the identification of the types of the risk faced by an organization what kind of risk may be faced by an organization that is what they have explained it to us how we can evaluate the financial risk there is a very good concept that say they teach us over here called var value at risk this entire chapter is a theory chapter except this one portion which is practical yes var is a practical concept except that say everything is theory Now, friends, over here, as far as the VAR is concerned, in this concept, we are going to have understanding of certain things, which is related to the portfolio management. That is what say we are going to understand over here. Then, evaluation of the appropriate method for the identification and the management of the financial risk. So, there will be a few methods. Which we will, with which we will identify that say this is the risk that we have, and then we are going to understand management of the same. Give you just a certain simple example so that you can understand that say what they are like uh, having a point to be considered. For example, if at all as a company, let us say that I borrow. at floating rate of interest in case of floating rate of interest what happens at so the rate of interest will keep on fluctuating like this we understand and say if at all the rate of interest is falling down we are happy with that but if at all the rate of interest is going up then in that case say we are having a loss loss in a way that say we have to pay high amount of the interest so this is the risk which you have when you borrow at floating rate of interest how can you hedge this risk how can you manage this risk then there are certain derivative transactions which are available in the market for example you can enter into cap transaction what do we understand with the cap transaction cap transaction is a transaction in which we are going to have a situation in which we will be able to restrict say the cost of the interest in a way that say we will find an opposite party and with that opposite party we will have a contract that if at all the rate of interest is say going above a point then in that case whatever the excess interest that i have to pay you will bear the same that kind of contract that you will have of course this kind of contracts cannot be free of cost you are required to pay certain charges but ultimately what happens at say once you make the payment of those charges then including those charges you will be able to say restrict the cost say to a certain limit only in no case your interest cost will be exceeding this it can be lower than that but not more than that this is the way you will be able to manage the risk if at all as an investor you have made investment in the securities 
which offer you the fixed interest income and in the market the rate of interest is likely to go up or in the market the rate of interest has already gone up then in that case what happens that so the value of your securities will fall down then in that case say so what you should do say so in order to overcome this kind of undervaluation of your investment this is what so we are going to discuss if at all you have taken loan in let us say euro currency and uh, as far as a euro currency is concerned it is constantly appreciating so by the time so you make the repayment of the loan so it is very expensive for you so to make the repayment of the loan this is what so we understand is a kind of risk which you have called foreign exchange risk when you borrow say in foreign currency and the foreign currency is likely to appreciate or it is appreciating then how can you hedge the same for that say we have say certain that is a certain transactions again called derivative transactions a very simple chapter that you have forward contract futures contract option contract these are the contracts which are there if at all you are going to make investment if at all you are planning to borrow and you are expecting that so the rate of interest may change adversely to you then you can enter into forward rate agreement very there will be a fixed rate at which so you can do the transaction if at all you are going to purchase a raw material and the price of the raw material keeps on fluctuating and you are expecting that so there will be a rise in the cost of the raw material then again you can enter into the forward contract to book a specific price at which you can buy it these are the things that so you can do so for the purpose of management of the risk and this is what we are going to understand over here so coming back to the one by one points what we are going to learn is first introduction that is identification of the type of risk second evaluation third absolutely a different concept related to your chapter of portfolio management value at risk and fourth evaluation of the appropriate method for the identification and management of the financial risk so let us start with the first segment identification of the types of risk faced by an organization a business organization faces many types of risk important among them are discussed below first is the strategic risk second is the compliance risk third is operational risk and the fourth is a financial risk these are the four risk which an organization is facing in that so the first strategic risk let us see that in strategic risk what kind of examples are so they have given they have given in examples like this that's a certain important strategic decision that so you take as an organization and uh, it may happen that say your decision which you have taken proves to be wrong and because of that say your company is like facing serious issues and there are fair chances that say your company will go into the liquidation that is the kind of risk which you have see the word strategic itself is indicating say it is the key decision which the organization has taken for example we understand and say as an organization you take a decision whether to go for labor intensive production or to go for say the machine intensive production as an organization you have let us say these kind of two options and you decide that say let me go for labor intensive production and suppose because of some reason say the labor rates are increasing in the market and because of that say it becomes very difficult for you so to cope up with that say the higher production cost and in that case your business is closed down if at all you are going for the machine oriented say the production and in that case suppose like certain technical defaults take place you have taken a wrong decision to purchase a machinery and uh, because of all that say the things are not going in your favor these things are considered to be so the kind of strategic risk 
So keeping that in mind, let us read the things that say they have provided to us. A successful business always needs a comprehensive and detailed business plan. But it is also a fact in, of life that if the things changes, even the best laid plans can become outdated. If it cannot keep pace with the latest trend. This is called as the strategic risk. So the strategic risk is a risk in which the company's strategy become less effective and struggles to achieve its goal. It could be due to technological changes, new competitor entering into the market, shift in the customer's demand, increase in the cost of the raw material, any number of the large scale changes. So these are the five things say, which form part of the strategic risk. They have provided an example of the Kodak company. They have provided something like this. So there was a time that the Kodak company was manufacturing two things. One was the Kodak camera and another was the Kodak roll. As far as the Kodak company uh, is concerned, say once upon a time it was having so the market share which was even exceeding like 75% exceeding even 90% that was a huge market share it was having. Then there was like the Kodak company itself has had invented like the digital camera. In case of digital camera we know that say, there are unlimited that is the number of clicks that say, you can have. So basically in order to say take picture you don't have to buy the roll. So the Kodak company thought that say, if at all we introduce this digital camera in the market then in that case whatever the roll business that say, we have say we will lose it. That is the reason so the Kodak company even though they invented it but they did not introduce the same in the market. The other companies invented the same product they introduced in the market. With that what happens is the convenience increases for the customers because you can have unlimited number of clicks. Then you can choose that say for which photographs you need to take like it's hard copy. So like the Kodak company say had like lost its market share substantially because not only its rules but even though say its cameras will also say not selling in the market because it was not updated with the technology. So this is the reason that say, the Kodak company say lost its majority market share and had to square off the business. This is what say, the risk which falls under the technology changes. This is what say, the first example that say, they have given. Kodak company which was able to develop a digital camera by 1975 but it considers this innovation as a threat to its core business model and failed to develop it. However, it paid a price because when the digital camera was ultimately discovered by other companies, it failed to develop it and left behind. The next example that say, they have given is of the Nokia company. We know that say, the Nokia company was market leader once upon a time. But unfortunately what happened that say Nokia company did not say keep pace with the change in the technology once again that is the touch screen mobile phone Android and because of that say, the like Samsung company captured say, the market to a very great extent. This is an another example that say if at all you do not keep pace with the that is you, you do not change yourself say with the changing trend then in that case you have to pay a huge price. Nokia when it failed to upgrade its technology to develop touch screen mobile phone that delay enables the Samsung to become the market leader in touch screen mobile phone. Then they have provided uh, an example of the Xerox. 
As far as the Xerox is concerned, we know that Xerox is the name of the company and photocopies say something that say we take the from one paper to another paper. Yet the Xerox company so much like uh, popular that say the word Xerox is used for the photocopy. Now again in that say it happened like this that there was so there was a huge technology change even in the photocopy machinery. That is so the lesser printing. Xerox adopted that and with that say it say kept a pace with the change in the technology. So still even today Xerox company is there in the market as a market leader what it was there even that is say before. So Xerox which invented the photocopy machinery when laser printing was developed Xerox was quick lap of this opportunity and change the business model to develop the lesser printing. So it survived the strategic risk and escalated its profit further. This is what they have provided with respect to the strategic risk. The next is the compliance risk. That is what we are going to understand. Uh, friends over here, they have provided one thing as the new competitor entering into the market. In that say, we know that say, the GUI is one of the best example. Uh, because of entry of the GO, we know that say, the other companies had to face tremendous issue even for the survival. Airtel, Vodafone, these companies say have faced the idea uh, too much competition. And because of that, says number of changes have taken place. The prices also of the like the data have substantially decreased. So these kind of things say that may take place. The next is the uh, compliance risk. Compliance is simply what we understand is say the kind of rules and regulations which are required to be met. And if at all you do not meet them. Then in that case, you have to pay a penalty, it's a compliance risk. You have to comply with certain laws. If at all you do not meet with them, then in that case, you have to pay a price for it. And this is the compliance risk. So keeping this in our mind, so we will read this. Every business needs to comply, needs to satisfy with the rules and regulations. For example, with the advent of the Companies Act 2013, the continuous updating of the SEBI guidelines. Each business organization has to comply with plenty of the rules, the regulations and guidelines. Non-compliance will lead to penalty in form of fine and imprisonment. However, when a company ventures into a new business line or new geographical area, the real problem then occurs. So when you enter into a new business line or when you enter into the new geographical area, then in that case say this problem occurs. For example, a company pursuing cement business is likely to venture into the sugar business. So from cement you enter into the sugar in a different state and that too in a different state. But laws applicable to the sugar mills in that state are different. So that poses compliance risk. If the company fails to comply with the law related to the new area or industry or sector, it will pose a serious threat to its survival. So there are definitely the chances that say you may not be able to survive because of the huge penalties that say you have to pay. Example of the compliance risk. They have provided an example like this of King Vision. CCI, Competition Commission of India, has imposed rupees 1 crore fine on Kingfisher Airline for not providing the sufficient information in the CCI's investigation of the airline's alliance with Jet Airways. According to the Kingfisher Airline, that is, according to the Kingfisher Airline, has not some that is furnished certain information. The Director General Investigation had asked for a while probing the case, so we have imposed a fine of rupees 1 crore 
on King Fisher for non-compliances. A senior CCI told to TTI, that is an official uh, newspaper. Uh, King Fisher Airline responded to TTI in a statement. Pursuant to legal advice, the company withdraw special leave petition filed in the Supreme Court and immediately thereafter, prior to the hearing, to the show cause notice, provided all information available with the with it to the CCI. In spite of this, CCI imposed a said fine to the company. The company is obtaining the legal advice. Under Section 43 of the Competition Act, if any person fails to comply with the CCI's power to request information, and in certain cases, CCI may levy a fine which may extend to rupees 1 lakh per day of such continuing failure up to rupees maximum 1 crore. And friends, we know that so we are in this field of the chartered accountancy, so we understand that so the importance of the compliance risk. There are a number of rules and regulations which may be even the procedural that say we are required to comply. If at all we do not comply with them, then in that case we have to pay so the, uh, a penalty and basically the product pricing is such that say in a so competitive field that you may not have kept scope for say meeting with all those say the legal cost. Uh, you might be aware that say the in European countries, so the, even Google was had to pay a huge penalty running in crores of rupees because say they were having again a kind of allegation from the competitors that say they try to manipulate the retailers and they make sure that say the retailers are always having say the Google search engine say included in their mobile phone only in that case say they will also give say certain facilities to them. So these are the undue certain influences because of which say the Google was taking some disadvantage. And because of that say, even Google had to pay a huge fine. So these things say keep uh, going on. So this is a risk which the company has. And say we have to take care of this. This is what we understand as a compliance risk. Now third we are going to discuss the operational risk. Next is the operational risk. Dear students, the term operational risk stands for that basically there are a number of things which are required to be decided by the top management but it is getting executed with the middle management and lower management. With that, so the things are executed. That is what we understand is the operational work which is done and in this there are number of chances of the fraud and this is fraud or mistakes that is considered to be the operational risk. So we have to keep in our mind that say in the operation, in the getting the work executed, there are certain issues. That is what we understand is the operational risk. This type of risk relates to internal risk. It also relates to the failure on the part of the company to cope with the day-to-day -day operational problem. That is when you get the things executed. Operational risk relates to the people as well as the process. So dear students, mentioning this is something which is important. We will take an example to illustrate this. For example, an employee paying out rupees 1 lakh from the account of the company instead of 10,000. It is a kind of weak internal control. So it may be as a part of the fraud or it may be a part of the mistake. This is a people as well as a process risk. An organization can employ another person to check the work of that person who has mistakenly paid an amount of 1 lakh or can install an electronic system that flag off an unusual amount. So that will say uh, give an alarming that say this is an unusual amount. This is what we understand is the segregation of the duties. This is what say, they have provided in terms of the operational risk. The last is the financial risk. 
so for every point so the kind of explanation which they have given that we have tried to segregate the financial risk is referred to unexpected changes in the financial condition such as the price at which you sell the product or at which you buy the raw material exchange rate for import if at all the foreign currency appreciates for export if the foreign currency depreciates credit rating if at all you are unable to make certain payments and because of that your credit rating is falling down interest rates if at all you have borrowed at floating rate and it is going up if at all you have borrowed at fixed rate and the rates are going down you have made certain investments at the fixed rate and the floating rate of interest is increasing you have made investment at the floating rate and so it is falling down this is what we understand is the kind of risk that you have though political risk is not a financial risk in the direct sense but the same can be included as an unexpected political change in any foreign country may lead to currency that is country risk which may ultimately result into the financial loss if at all you are having say let us say your business connection in china and unfortunately india and china have strained relationship then in that case of course your business is going to be affected with the same broadly the financial risk can be divided into following categories so the financial risk they have segregated in certain categories first is the counterparty risk counterparty risk means something like this let us say suppose you have made the prepayment to your supplier and your supplier is not delivering goods to you on time that is the counterparty risk as a bank you have given loan to somebody and that person is not making repayment to you is the counterparty risk political risk that we know that is the change in the central government change in the state government and this is very 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 important you must be aware that say uh, there was an era uh, approximately from 1996 to 1999 there were three central governments and uh, four to five prime ministers had changed after mr p v narsir rao atal bihari bajpayee ji was there say for 13 days then mr devgada was there then mr indra kumar gujral was there and then again bajpayee ji was there so that was the time period in which we can understand and uh, when mr devgada or mr indra kumar gujral was there there were 13 parties who were supporting said to the central government now taking those 13 parties consent and to run the government was definitely difficult so like definitely at any point of time say it was said that uh, that is said the alignment was say supposed to break down definitely so it was only the time maybe 2 months 6 months or 1 year and it happened within one or two years everything so this is what said the situation in which say you cannot take any decision we understand that say as far as the upa government was there to 2004 to 2009 upa government was retained in 2009 to 2014 so during this 10 years say whatever you can have a kind of estimation that say the central government will have say certain policies which they will continue from 2014 to 2019 modi ji that is nda government was there it is there even right now so we can take certain decisions considering that in central government say the india government is going to continue hopefully in 2024 modi ji will continue interest rate risk as what we understand is the borrowing lending i have explained that to you in detail currency risk is again what i have explained to you in detail when you deal in the foreign currency at the same time we understand that it is applicable when you are doing so the business you are taking up the projects overseas for example if at all you think from amazon then amazon has made investment in india like more than 1000 crores of rupees huge investment that they are making more than 
1,000 crores of rupees. Now, you think from that Amazon company point of view, that said when they are making this huge investment in India, then in that case, all these things are going to matter a lot to them. Even as far as the currency risk is concerned, because what happens that say, we are going to definitely pay in rupee currency. So they will be having certain income in rupee currency. Of course, they will be having certain number of expenses also in rupee currency, but ultimately net profit that say, they are able to earn is required to be repatriated in their own currency. And at that time, so this is going to be, say, going to be very risky. Like, if at all, somebody has a point that says, I want to establish my business in Afghanistan, I want to establish my business in Taliban, it is foolishness. That say you are developing your business in certain countries where there is so much uncertainty. If at all, I want to establish my business in Australia, in New Zealand, in United States, in Canada, in United Kingdom, then in that case it makes a sense. So learning all this once again in detail. So we are in the segment of the financial risk. In the financial risk, these are the four risks in which we are going to have understanding of the counterparty risk. As a student, you need to be having a clarity that say we are studying the individual point and it is sub point of which point that is what you need to properly understand this risk occurs due to non honoring of obligation by the counterparty that is opposite party which can be failure to deliver the goods for the payment already made or vice versa repayment of the borrowing and the interest etc Thus, this risk also covers the credit risk that is deferred by the counterparty. Next is a political risk. So that sub points are continuing and in that so the second point is political risk. Generally, this type of the risk is faced by an overseas investor. As adverse action taken by the government of the host country may lead to huge losses. We know that say like the Adani company is having say it's like expansion of the business in Australia and in Australia they are facing say certain this kind of risk only that is a kind of like the opposition by the local person over there. This is the political risk because the government of that country will also having say certain things which are uh, not favorable for Adani company. It is confiscation or destruction of the overseas property. So if at all the property of the Adani company is say uh, taken by Australian government, the rationing of the remittance to the home country, you are not allowed to take amount in uh, India, the restriction of the conversion of the local currency of host country into foreign currency, you cannot convert Australian dollar into rupee or dollar Restriction as a borrowing, you cannot borrow beyond a point. Invalidation of the patent, whatever the exclusivity right which you have on certain products for that say invalidation. Price control, you cannot keep the price say, which is exceeding this. These are what we understand is a political risk and which they have kept it say as overseas investor. Next is the interest rate risk. This risk occurs due to the changes in the interest rate resulting into the change in the asset, change in the liabilities. This risk is more important for banking companies as their balance sheet items are more interest sensitive because banks have given loan and whatever the income that say they have, say it is in form of interest. For a bank, base of the earning is spread between borrowing and lending rates. Borrowing and lending rates, we understand that's uh, the borrowing in form of savings account, in form of fixed deposit and so on. As far as the current account is concerned, in that say uh, they do not offer any interest and they have given loan. So the difference between both of them is technically known as the spread. Spread means the difference. Interest rate risk 
two types of interest. One is the fixed, another is a floating. Risk in both of this type is inherent. Inherent means so it is thereby obvious. The company has borrowed money at the floating rate. Then with the increase in the floating rate, liability under fixed shall remain same. So when you are borrowed at the floating rate and the rate of interest is going up, this is the risk which you have. This fixed rate with the following floating rate, the liability of the company to pay interest under the fixed rate shall comparatively higher. Means you are borrowed at the fixed rate and the floating rate is falling down, then you feel that I have to pay interest at comparatively higher rate because I have borrowed at fixed rate. To cover such kind of risk, there are concepts called interest rate swap, cap, floor, forward rate agreement, futures, color. These are simple concepts which are covered in your chapter of interest rate risk management, which is very much connected to the derivative. So they have provided a diagram, fixed rate of interest is same and floating rate of interest will keep on changing. So the sub points are continuing, now the currency risk, that is the division of the financial risk. It is a form of the financial risk that arises from the changes in the price of the currency against another. Whenever the investors or the companies have assets or the business operation across national borders, like Adani company, Amazon as the examples that we are discussing. They face the currency risk or foreign exchange risk. For example, if at all you are a US investor and you have stocks in Canada, the return that you realize is affected by both change in the price of the stock and change in the value of the Canadian dollar against the United States dollar. So if at all you have made investment in, let us say, one of the Canadian stock, which appreciates, so you gain in the stock. But if at all, so the Canadian dollar currency depreciates against the US dollar, then in that case, to that extent, you will have a loss. Similarly, something like this. If at all, as an investor, you have made investment in United Kingdom, in a way that say one of the stock in United Kingdom, the price of that stock is falling down. Then what will happen? That say you will have a loss. But if at all, there is an appreciation of the pound currency, then in that case you will gain. Reverse. If at all the stock is gaining, it is positive for you. But the pound currency depreciating is losing for you. This is the way the overall gain is supposed to be calculated. So if you realize 15% return in your Canadian stock, but Canadian dollar depreciates by 15% against the dollar, this amount of the gain or loss will be zero. So friends, at this point of time, we have like, covered the first point, that is first point. Identification of the types of the risk faced by organization. And now we are going to understand the second, that is called evaluation of the financial risk. So the Yata will out your body to Pucho. So the Yata will out your body to Pucho. Friends over here, I would like to tell you that that the institute has not kept, that is, has not given huge explanation for every point. They have provided very concise explanation with the points. If at all you write say something which is relevant under each point, that is very good. However, at least say try to make sure that say you are writing the head points and inside that head points you are writing the relevant portion. So evaluation of the financial risk, in that so there are three things that so we are going to understand. One is from investor point of view, second is from company point of view and third is from the government point of view. So we are going to understand, we are going to take into account the evaluation of the financial risk from these three different point of view, from investor point of view. 
the financial risk can be evaluated from the different point of view as follows from the stakeholders point of view major stakeholders of the business are equity shareholders and they view the financial gearing that is the ratio of the debt in capital structure as a risk since in the event of the winding up of the company they will be least prioritized so here from investor point of view they have explained something like this that as far as the equity shareholders are concerned it is considered that say, they have the maximum risk why because in the event of the liquidation of the company the sale value of the assets will be first used for the repayment of the debt financing and then whatever the remaining amount say that goes to the equity shareholders the term gearing stands for introduction of the committed sources of finance in the capital structure at your second level ipcc or intermediate you have studied a ratio which is given a name as capital gearing ratio capital gearing ratio stands for so the introduction of the committed sources of finance in the capital structure even for a lender existing gearing is also a risk since a company having high debt that is high gearing faces more risk of the default of the payment of the interest and the principal so they want to mention something like this that suppose there is already existing debt that the company has and the company is issuing the new debt financing then in that case uh, for the new debt financing it is considered that say, they have more risk why because say, there is already existing debt financing which the company has introduced if at all the debt financing proportion is more if at all the debt financing proportion is more then in that case certain things that say, you have studied friends degree of financial leverage would be more in that case the financial break even point would be more in that case we understand that so the chances that the company will go into liquidation is more why because we know that say number of times say, there is fluctuation of the earning in the business if at all you are having a certain commitment say for making payment of the financial charges if it is low level then in that case even in this kind of situation you will be able to survive but if it is this then in that case so you will not be able to survive say in this kind of situation so the chances that say, the company will go into bankruptcy so will increase in that case this is what we understand so this is what say, they have provided the risk from the investor point of view in investor they have provided both the investors not only the equity shareholder but even the debenture holder i do not know whether you recall or not say certain questions that say you were doing at your intermediate or ipcc level in that say you must have observed that whenever the proportion of the debt financing increases then in that case the cost of equity increases then in that case the price earning ratio is falling down the new debt financing is always having so the rate of interest which is more than the existing rate of interest why because the new debt financer is aware that so there is a risk for making investment over here see they have provided me a commitment that say we will pay you but i can see that say, already it is saving that financing if at all there is say some bad situation bad like the condition of the company then how will they pay me so even expectation of the debt financer increases in that case these are the certain things that say, you must have observed and this is covered more in detail in one of your chapter called capital structure theories an excellent chapter i tell you friends <clears throat> next from the company point of view from the company point of view if a company borrows excessively or lend to someone who defaults then it can be forced into the liquidation and that is what's the risk from the company point of view so they have that is say, included two things over here one is let's say you borrow excessively and the second is that say you give loan to like uh, anyone and who defaults 
This is especially true in case of a bank. Wherein if at all you lend it to a specific group, if at all there is a branch uh, of a bank say, which has given majority of the loan to a specific group only, then in that case it has a huge risk. Second thing that say, if at all you lend to a specific sector only, even in that case say, there is a huge risk. Why? Because if at all that say, sector is falling down, then in that case say, the majority of the borrowers will not be able to make repayment to you. Next, if at all you are having say, the, like the lending to like the particular geographical area, even in that case it may happen like this. Uh, for example, you have given loan to a specific geographical area and unfortunately due to any natural calamity, say number of businesses are affected over there. Then in that case, say, ultimately it is going to have an impact on you. From the government point of view, the financial risk can be viewed as a failure of any bank like Lehman Brothers that I was having a discussion with you. Drawn grading of any financial institution, sorry, or downgrading of any uh, financial institution leading to spread of distrust among the society at large. Even this risk also includes the willful defaulters, and that is for the majority of the cases, unfortunately. This can also be extended to sovereign debt crisis. Friends, we know that say, like the number of examples that say we have, uh, one of the example recently that said the uh, Maharashtra, that is in Maharashtra, said there was a cooperative bank which defaulted and number of the depositors have lost their money. We know that said the number of, like the default case happened, like Mr. Uh, Malia, then Mr. Nira Modi, said these are the defaulters who have uh, like done a huge like fraud to the banks and ultimately it is required to be paid by the taxpayers only. And because of this, say the people also lose faith in banking sector. This is what say we know, that is we understand. Uh, as far as the peer-to-peer -peer lending, that was uh, one thing that say we were discussing. In that, say I was just going through an article in which uh, it was mentioned by the author that uh, writer that so the peer-to-peer -peer lending is now going to be governed by the Reserve Bank of India or the crowdfunding is going to be governed by the Reserve Bank of India. As an investor, you should not be very happy with that because already the banking is already governed by the Reserve Bank of India. And we know that so, the, so many frauds have taken place even though it was governed by the Reserve Bank of India. So somewhere the fraud is going to take place then definitely it will that is say take place anyways that is anyways so this is a huge risk which the government has uh, if at all you see the from the 2004 to 2014 uh, you must be aware that say the number of frauds had taken place in india uh, even the supreme court uh, judge had said that say the figure of the fraud is huge that say it takes me time for me to read this amount. So it is 176 lakhs crore something like that, uh, 2G scam, then uh, coal scam, number of huge scams were there at that time and ultimately it will lose trust of people say in government also. The financial risk can be reduced but it cannot be nullified by entering into the contract of the hedging and other means. Hedging is a method of reducing the risk where a combination of the assets are selected to offset the movement of each other. A very good explanation is given by them. There is a concept that say you have in derivative, so that is given a name as the stock index futures. So the stock index trading say will give you similar kind of say the hedging uh, advantage. You already have like long position in cash market. Long position in cash market means you are having say, certain stocks. You have made investment in stocks having value of rupees 10 lakhs. You are expecting the prices of the stock to go down 
then what you can do you can enter into the transaction of the index futures so what happens let's say if at all this is falling down then in that case you will try to make some gain from the index futures and this is what they have provided over here hedging is a method of reducing risk where a combination of the assets are selected to offset the movement of each other because when your portfolio will have loss in a way that's a fall in the value the index will make a gain and the reverse if at all the portfolio is appreciating then in that case you have to be prepared to sacrifice your gain for instance when investing in the stock it is possible to buy an option to sell the stock at a defined price at some point in future this combination of the portfolio and option is now less risky less likely to move below a given value as in diversification there is a cost this time in buying the option which there is a premium so they want to mention something like this suppose you buy a stock then after 3 months what will be value of your portfolio we understand that so the value of the portfolio is like this whatever is the spot value of your investment itself is value of your portfolio however suppose say along with purchasing of the share you purchase put option for the share then what will happen after 3 months okay we understand that so this is the exercise price if at all spot price of the security is less than the exercise price then in that case you can exercise your put option and say you will be able to get say at least say this value of your portfolio and if at all in the spot market value is more than the exercise price then in that case you can get the spot value as a value of your portfolio your knowledge of the derivatives required to understand this uh, explanation next this is an important point that we are going to discuss called var value at risk this is the only practical portion that we have in this entire theory chapter however it has been asked for not less than five times in examination yes so it is very 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 important what we are going to have understanding why we have a concept like var what are the methods to calculate the var value at risk the features application and lastly we are going to understand the example that is the numerical and of course not only the practical but even the theory is also asked for var this is very much connected your to your concept of the portfolio management so your portfolio concept should be cleared before uh, you study this the most popular and the traditional measure of the risk is volatility dear students the term volatility stands for something like this this is considered to be the volatility this is the mean value and we understand that so the standard deviation measures the volatility let's say what may be the change in the return so from the mean return that is what are the standard deviation measures for example expected return is for example expected return is 20 percentage and standard deviation is 5 percentage these are the statistical values so standard deviation is indicating that say how far my actual return will deviate from the mean return standard deviation so to what extent my actual return may have a variation from the mean return that is what the standard deviation is indicating the main problem with volatility that is what we have understood standard deviation is like however it does not care about the direction of an investor's movement so what happens at say when i say that the standard deviation is 5 percentage 
it means that so the return can be going down also by 5 percentage or it can go up also by 5 percentage. So the deviation is on both the sides. Now this statement says that if at all investor is getting instead of 20 percent 25 percentage or instead of 20 percent 30 percentage instead of 20 percent 35 percentage then of course investor is happy with that. Investor is not bothered about it. If at all he is getting lower return, 15 percentage, 10 percentage, 5 percentage, in this case he has like a botheration. He is not bothered about this. However, the standard deviation is measuring the change on the both the sides. That is what it mentions. This is what covered in the portfolio management chapter. A stock can be volatile, volatile, okay. Because it suddenly jumps higher or lower, of course the investors are not distressed by gain. So suddenly there is a gain, then in that case I am not worried, I am not bothered. For investors, risk is about the odds of losing money. That's very true. VAR, value at risk, is based on that common sense part. By assuming the investors care about the odds of really big loss, VAR answers the questions. What is my worst case scenario? Or what my, how much do I that is could I lose really in a bad one? So VAR will give you answer for this question. VAR will give you answer that say what is my worst case scenario? In worst case, what will happen with me? You tell me that if at all I am prepared for it, then in that case without any moderation I can make investment. In a way that say, suppose, I am just taking a small example like this. Suppose I am making an investment of rupees 1 lakh with my portfolio consultant for one year. And I am asking a simple question to him that what do you think? Let's say what would be my maximum loss say within this one year. Suppose he tells me that say, I will manage your portfolio in such a way that say, you will not have loss of by more than 20,000. I am prepared for it. He is of course whenever I make investment with my portfolio consultant he will tell me say number of things about the gain. But I want to ask him say a difficult question that how much can I maximum lose. And if at all I am prepared for this, then in that case I will make investment without any moderation. Of course, there will be a certain confidence level attached to the statement that say he is giving to me. He tells me that sir you will not lose more than 20,000 and I tell you this with 95% confidence level. With 99% confidence level. Then in that case, I can have some reasonable assurance. So the idea behind the VAR is VAR statistics has three components. Now listen carefully. One, it will tell you that say, what is the time period in which say we give you that say this is the maximum loss that you will have. Second is the confidence level. See, whatever we say, we cannot tell you with 100% assurance. We will tell you say with maximum 99% assurance. We can also tell you that say with 95%, 90%, like that say we can tell you say somewhat with the lower that is the confidence level also. But maximum we can tell you something with 99% confidence. And the loss amount or loss percentage. So within this time period with this much confidence level we tell you that say you will not lose more than this. This is the kind of report that said that will be generated by VAR. Keep these three parts in mind as we give some examples of the variation of the question that VAR answers. What is the most I can with 95% or 99% level of confidence expected to lose in rupee over the next month? This is the question. What is the maximum percentage I can 
with 95% or 99% confidence expect to lose over the next year? These questions are going to be answered by using the concept of value at risk. This is what we are going to understand. As per Wikipedia, BAR is a measure of the risk of investment. Given the normal market condition in a set of the period, say one day, it estimates how much an investment might lose. The investment can be portfolio, capital investment, or for an exchange rate, etc. VAR answers two basic questions. What will be the worst case scenario? In a way, that's the maximum loss. Maybe in rupees term, maybe in percentage term. What will be the loss? And of course, a confidence level and time period. It was first applied in 1922 in New York Stock Exchange and then in the financial world in 1990 and become the world's most widely used used widely used method of the measurement of risk the methods are one is the historical another is the variance covariance and another is monte carlo simulation monte carlo simulation is basically an operational research technique or Features are components for the calculation, time period, it may be one day, it may be 10 days or anything else. Confidence level, generally 95%, 99%, not necessarily. It can be for anything else also. Loss in percentage or loss in amount term. So, statistical method, time horizon, probability, that is a confidence level control risk and Z score. These are the things. It is a statistical method. It is a type of the statistical tool based on the standard deviation. Standard deviation is also given a name as standard desperation. It is also given a name as the volatility, which we study in portfolio management. Again, a very simple chapter. VAR can be applied for the different time zone, that is horizon. It may be for a day, it may be for a week, it may be for a month, or it, and so on. Probability, assuming the values are normally attributed, probability of the maximum loss can be predicted. So this is the bell shape curve diagram, which assumes the normal probability distribution method. That is what's said generally that we have in statistics. Control risk. Risk can be controlled by setting limits for maximum loss. It means that say, what you can do, you can do the transaction so that say, you will be able to control the risk that I do not want to have risk more than this. In a way that say, I can tell to my manager that say, I am giving you an amount of rupees 10 lakhs for investment for one year. Make sure that say, you are making investment in such a way that say, my loss is not exceeding an amount of 1 lakh. This is what I can tell to my manager. If at all I, that is say, give my funds to 5 portfolio managers, then I can tell them that say, you have to make sure that say, you are making investment in such a way that say, my loss is not exceeding this amount. This is the way I can control the risk. Z score, this is the statistical value. Z score indicates how many standard deviation is away from the mean. This is the mean. Okay. This is like the standard deviation plus or minus mean. That is called the standard deviation to mean <coughs> limits. Z score indicates how many standard deviation is away from the mean value of a population. When it is multiplied with the standard deviation, it provides VAR. So its calculation is provided to us that we are going to understand just now. Uh, you may be aware of a formula Z is equal to X minus X bar divided by standard deviation. 
So x minus x bar is equal to z into standard deviation. So over here, z provides like this. Z score indicates how many standard deviation is away from the mean value of the population. When it is multiplied with the standard deviation, so you can see that, say, when it is multiplied with the standard deviation, so z table reading for a specific confidence level multiplying with the standard deviation is indicating x minus x bar in a way that say it provides VAR value at risk. Application of VAR, this is very important to measure the maximum possible loss on any portfolio or a trading position. So whatever the trading position that you have, it can have maximum loss to what extent. As a benchmark for the performance measure for any operation or trading, that in any trading we should not be having such a loss exceeding this. To fix a limit for individuals dealing in front office of treasury department. So you tell to your front office, the treasury department, that we have to take the position in such a way that our loss should not be exceeding this. To enable the management to decide the trading strategies as a tool for asset liability management, especially in case of bank. This is very important. We know that as far as the banks are concerned, so they have certain liabilities which are of the short term in nature which are of the medium term in nature, which are of the long term in nature. Accordingly, they will be having, say, the portfolio of the assets.